as raw and fresh as it was 20 years ago. I think it's quite extraordinary that you're able to, you know, recreate that atmosphere such, a, you know, long time afterwards. It's Danny Boyle, you know, yeah. it's just, I think it's his, it's him, it comes from him, his passion and um, the way he leads us as a crew and as a cast. It's quite amazing. I've never known such a sort of quiet, gentle guy and I've never seen any, oh, everybody tries to do their best, best work for him. It's interesting. And so he throws the same passion into it. And John Hodge, with his writing, threw the same passion into it. And we did with our our bits, our acting. And um, and here you go. You get, but it's a, but it's it's a different film. I think it feels different to me. It's it's a, we didn't set out to try and remake the first film, which would have been a terrible mistake. Um, so it, it it's it has its own. It's a true follow up. I think it's a really true sequel, if you like, to. Train spotting this one. Well, it's interesting because everybody's just a little bit more Hollywood since then. How does that change a little bit the acting exercise? You guys were so young and and, and raw at the time. Well, huge trailers, manicures, you know, massa masseurs, those <laughs> kind of things. Yeah, the odd chef. Yeah. Personal chef. It can't be for crash, everybody. A crash trailer <laughs> for all our children. It's you know, it's it's um, it's funny because there's like. There's positives and negatives I see to that, and, and, and not, not 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 being the Hollywood thing, which is you know kind of a myth to anyone with you know a modicum of sensibleness about them. You know, it's it, it's your experience and the rest of your experience in the in the business for 20 years, which Danny you know says, oh, you guys are all so much more experienced. So he really wants your input a lot more, you know. And he came to visit with each of us to sit down and read through the script before and you know listen to what we had to say about it and emails and stuff which you just don't do before because you're young and you don't know what you're doing but you know there's a that's brilliant but for someone like me as well it's like I you know you look back at I look back I watch that film and it's like you do everything you're asked to without second guessing it without second guessing yourself and you're a hundred percent invested in it and so there's this double-edged thing that comes with you know, experience and judgment, which is great, but also you're, you might be second guessing yourself and you can turn on yourself and, you know, not be all in sometimes. So from, it's an interesting experiment. <laughs> Did you know at the time it was going to be such a groundbreaking <laughs> turning point of the film? Incredible end to that sentence. <laughs> so unexpected it was, it for was, all it of us. Was great. I just froze. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, did you know at the time it was going to be such a turning point? Uh, On the first film? one? And yeah, so groundbreaking. I don't, I don't know that we thought very... I, I didn't think very much about what it might do. I, but I never, I never thought it would be anything other than a massively great movie, you know. I didn't think <laughs> I of it in that. terms of its success, yeah. but I, I did. I really didn't doubt it. Because I'd, I'd done Shallow Grave with Danny and, um, and John, the writer, and, um, and, I, I, and I, like Danny Boyle's like a sort of... God to me, like I, he was my first director, and I and um, I didn't doubt that we had Irvin Welsh's incredible novel to work on, and these actors and the music that he. I don't know everything about it. it was yeah. just like it was going to be great, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, it was like check this out, fuck you. you know? Yeah, yeah, because it was the first time that you know imagery and music were utilized in in that way in cinema. So do you remember seeing it for the first time? Was it at the Cannes Film Festival, which? was, if I remember correctly, where it completely exploded to the world. We, I remember seeing it for the first time in a screening room in Soho in London mm. with just very few people. I think that was when I, I was trying to think, remember the first time I saw it and I couldn't, but I wasn't at Cannes, but uh, that, I, I remember coming Soho, out of yeah. there and uh, like sort of numb, just feeling numb. I go, oh my God. <laughs> and I felt a bit like that with Shallow Grave with, I, you know, we played these scenes and Brian Tafano was our cinematographer on both of, on Train Spotting and the, the original Train Spotting and Shallowgrave. And there's something I didn't notice while we were shooting those films about how they were shooting them. And so when you see them, you're like, oh, oh my great. God, that's what they were doing. You know, I don't know. I was blown away by it. Uh, do audiences expect you to have stayed in touch or see each other regularly in the past 20 years? And what was the case, basically? Because you've done several films, I think, with uh, Ewan. Ewan, or yeah. with Ewan. And you've worked with Robert. Yeah, I worked with Robert once afterwards. Soon afterwards, actually. Yeah. Well, I was marvellous and we had a bloody good time. Yeah. <laughs> one of the lines, yeah. One of my yeah, favourite lines. Yeah. So you didn't all stay in touch, was it? Did, well, I no, mean, we all, because yeah. we all, what, what's happened is we've all just worked and worked and worked all over the place. 
And uh, I've, like you say, worked with you in a few times. I don't think I saw Bobby at all since the train spotting film, but not for any reason. Just otherwise, we'd, our paths didn't cross. Yeah, exactly. They and hadn't seen each other since the rap party or something like that, right. which is extraordinary because it, it feels, you know, when you see them together, like they've seen each other very, very often. Well, we have this very strong bond. bond. This movie's like, there's no other movie I can think of that I've been in where the cast have this sort of, I don't know, it's very special. Well, it was special to, to its actors. It was special to its audience. It was a turning point for me in, in my career because I thought, you know, if all films are like that, I wish. Mm. Um, you know, it's going to be great. Uh, uh, was it the music for you that you remember the, the most? Which, which part was the most special? Oh. You can't extricate one from the other, really, mm -hmm. can you? Because it's so that what he does beautifully, Danny, is, is uh, bring all of the elements of filmmaking so nicely together. You can't. I was, you know, yeah. I was saying earlier that, that, that you know it's it's really not not the sort of the fin finished product. It's you know you carry forward, you learn so much from from like your director about how you know what's the best way to go about stuff, what's the best way to mm. treat a crew, you know what's the best what who you know the best way to you you hire the best people, you know great designers. How important everybody is to that project is something that you learn from a project like train spotting and working with Danny and how important rehearsal and preparation and and involvement and talking to each other is and how important the truth is and this was I worked with him in in theater as well and he's just obsessed with the truth of any situation and uh, you know I think we all carry that forward and so if you sort of single one thing out it's like you learn what the really the top, pe the top people to work for, how, how to do it a little bit, you know? Because you, sometimes you see people and they're like really good at one thing or, and they're just, they're not doing those things and, and things aren't working and, you know, I, I, I take that forward, you know, that was a really good thing. And finally, what do you expect from younger audiences now that are discovering this yeah. type of film and, you know, the day and age of Marvel movies and Star Wars films? And well, it's, a, it's an odd one to know. I don't know if, if you haven't seen Trainspotting, what this film means to you. I don't know. I, it's really an amazing piece of filmmaking, like the first one was. Absolutely. Like, really incredible and new, and I, I can't think of another film like it. Um, and on top of that, we have the ones that know and love the original one. We have all this connection to these people, uh, which makes it feel like we're we're reuniting with people that we know, old friends. And uh, I, what I'm encouraged, I'm like my kids' generation, my twenty-year-old and my fifteen-year-olds, all know, you know, maybe not the fifteen-year-olds, but my t my eldest daughter, she, absolutely, her peers, and she have a sort of relationship with Train Spotting already. It's not. It's a film that they're all familiar with, and not just because I'm in it, but they. It's, it's alive in their generation, it is. And I think that this film, and, and now the, hopefully the buzz that's created about this, will make them go and more people go and look at the first one. And, uh, which is on Netflix, by the way, if you need to see it. <laughs> and, uh, and check it out before seeing this one. That's what I would do.